Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be assembling one of the three bolt mechanisms that make up this lock. This is the bolt for the center of the lock and I have everything inserted into the back plate. Nothing's riveted yet. This is kind of the equivalent of a dry assembly in woodworking. Once I get the whole lock assembled and working fine then I can go ahead and rivet everything in place but for now I still need everything to be removable so if I need to make any adjustments or change the position of something I can still do that. Also I still want to go over all the pieces and do a final finish before I actually assemble the lock. But at this point I just want to go ahead and see the actual mechanism working. Once I know the lock is working then I'll be able to relax and take whatever time I need to finish all the pieces properly. Even though I'm going to be doing the final cleanup and finishing later on, there is still some preliminary shaping that needs to get done because that may affect the performance of the lock. At this point I've cut all the pieces to length and I'm going to be spending a little bit of time changing their cross section slightly. I want all the elements to be as sturdy as possible, but I don't want them to look heavy and bulky inside the lock. So the back sides of each piece is going to be the original thickness, but the front edge that's going to be visible is going to be fairly narrow. That way the elements are strong, but they still seem to be made out of a thinner material. The other thing I'm doing is filing away a bit of the bottom edge of each piece so that only the pivot point where my thumb is right now is touching the plate. This will allow each piece to rotate freely without dragging on the plate. And here you can see again how changing that cross section really lightens up the appearance of this piece without compromising the strength. Now that the levers are close to their final shape, I'm ready to start scribing the location of all the guide blocks. The simplest way to set up the rear bolt guide is to have a gauge block that is the exact length of the amount of travel that you need. That way you can rest the gauge block against the part and then put the rear guide on the other side of that gauge block and everything's going to line up. So I'm getting ready to cut the holes for the guide blocks for the bolts. I have an anvil block set up in the vise and I've pre-drilled all the holes in the back plate. And as you might have guessed I'm going to be using a chisel to chop out most of the material for the tenons on the guide blocks. I have the plate supported by the anvil block and I'm driving the chisel directly down into the surface so it's sitting right on top of the anvil block so I have to make sure that I don't go down any further than about halfway. I'm not concerned about removing the material here, I'm basically just outlining this rectangle that I need to remove and I'm using the chisel to just basically chop up the entire surface within that rectangle. The hole that I've drilled allows the metal to move around as I'm chiseling it, so I'm not putting any stress into the plate as I'm driving the chisel into the surface. And then when I feel that I've gotten down to about two-thirds of the thickness of the metal, I can move the plate over to the edge of the anvil block and simply use the chisel as a punch and drive out the remaining bits of metal that are at the bottom of the hole. And if you've chopped down far enough, you should be able to shear out the bottom of the hole without distorting the plate hardly at all. And then of course before anything else, you always check the guide block with the holes to make sure they're lining up properly. 
At this point I could continue with the chisels to square up the hole, but I would need to have a waste block or a brass block or something on the anvil to uh, make sure that the chisel doesn't go all the way into the anvil surface. So that's a little bit awkward. Uh, what I usually do at this point, if I have enough room to get a needle file in there, I'll clean up the hole with a needle file. The last thing that I need to do to this bolt assembly is to cut a small square hole at the back of the bolt so the lever has some way of pulling the bolt back into the lock. Once again I've started by drilling a hole that's going to take care of most of the material and it's also going to allow me to push the chips somewhere. Metal carves away fairly easily if it has somewhere to go. Once I got the dimensions of the hole roughed in at the vise, I moved back to the anvil block so I could drive the chisel straight into the block. Quite often this is the easiest way to deal with a small piece that you just can't clamp in the vise because there isn't enough surface area to withstand the hammering. Laying the piece flat on an anvil block supports the entire surface and really allows you to drive the chisel in and remove a lot of material quickly. Here again I'm working back from the hole that I've drilled so the chips have somewhere to go as I'm carving away. And here again the chisels are used to remove 90% of the material so I can get the file in there to finish off. Now I just need to file in a shoulder at the end of the lever so the two pieces can fit together. So this is what we're after. The push rod is going to pull the bolt back into the lock and then when the key is removed the spring is going to push the bolt back into its original position. So that's the first one done. The same process is going to be used to fit the other two bolts into the lock. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the simplest way, of course, is to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have questions and you want to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at either one of the addresses that I have listed here. It may take me a couple of days, but I will get back to you. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.